Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Should be working. Hmm. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear me now. It should be working now. I can hear myself. So I, will, I would assume that you guys can also hear me. I mean, I can hear myself through the stream, so it should be okay. Let me double check that. All right. I think we're good to go. Excellent. All right. So uh, what I was saying is that I'm testing uh, a new computer. So I finally put together my new computer rig and so that's why I'm sort of like, I'm not sure if the video and the audio is working fine. Just want to make sure that all the settings that I had in the previous one are translated nicely to this new one. So I'll be, um, I'll be testing a few things um, today through the session as well, just to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, but yeah, for the most part, what I was mentioning is that here is the final character, uh, kind of like the, the render of the sketch that we did in the previous time. Um, so it's uh, Justin A cube, Justin A cube, uh, not like this time sir, so far, all right. So that's good. Um, that might as well be because of the the new computer, which is a, a good sign. And yeah, so this is the the final render. Um, obviously, we didn't have a chance to to render him out in the previous session, um, but most of the the work was done during that session. All I did was I took the polypane, everything, send everything to Keyshot and just assign a couple of materials and, and just render this, this guy out. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I did a bit of a paint over just because I didn't want to go back into ZBrush and fine tune all the placement of the feathers. So I just tweaked that out like you'll see here. If I zoom in. So I, I just sort of add a bit of makeup to the, to the image so that it doesn't, um, you know, so that the placement looks a little bit better and more integrated with the image, but that's pretty much um, all I did. And that's the final image. So because I'm gonna call this guy finished, or we're gonna leave it as it is, this uh, this sketch, we're gonna move on and do something uh, a bit different today. So I wanna try to go out of my comfort zone in a way uh, with these sessions so that I can push myself as well to, to test new things and. Uh, like we did last session uh, towards the end we you know try to discover new things and, and and see if i can come up with new techniques and and stuff that um, you guys might be interested in uh, and that's the whole point of these sessions uh, that's why we decided um, with the pixelogic guys we decided to call it the zbrush live make it happen in zbrush just so that you guys can see the power of zbrush in not only making creatures which is what i feel more comfortable doing and what i like doing but also all the other sides of the software, and, and we're gonna try all of those. Um, I'm not, I might not be the best at, you know, if we do jewelry, obviously there's, um, you know, you can look at Nacho Riesco or Thomas Whittleback, you know, those are the guys to look um, for if you're interested in that, but we, we can try all those things just to try and, and test different workflows. So for today, I thought we could do um, kind of like a diorama, um, like a bonsai. So I'm going to use a few different techniques to produce a, a little tree, a little bonsai, uh, but quite detailed. And we're going to use uh, nano tiles, the, the plugin that Joseph um, wrote. We're going to use nano mesh, insert meshes, all the, the sculpting brushes, um, C spheres. So I'm going to try to show you guys a few different techniques on, on how to build an entire mini contain scene uh, just in ZBrush. So Let's just start with that. Let me just check the chat. Um, Isis Galante, thanks. Gracias, amigo. Hey, Cube. Hey, Ashley. Good to see you in here. Bonsais are awesome. Yes, they are. I absolutely, I'm, I'm very, like, I, I really like them, but I'm very intrigued as well. And, and I feel um, a little bit bad about them, <laughs> but, but I, I really, really like them. I had a, um, uh, it died because I didn't have any enough light. I didn't know about it. It was a Buddha's, Buddha's fingers or something. It was like a really chubby, fat little 
um, tree. But no, that's not the one that we're going to do today. We're gonna do more like of the classic bonsai that sort of twirls and moves around. So to start with, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the base. Um, I guess you can do, you know what, I'm just gonna imp import a cylinder that will be, or append a cylinder, that will be probably the easiest way. Go into solo mode, I'm also gonna turn perspective off, bring in the gizmo, and this is gonna be a very quick and simple base. Uh, we can add some ornaments and some details later on uh, if we get the time, but that's not the, the focus of this, um, this session. All right, so something like that should be okay. I'm gonna turn on polyframe, and I should have just initial, you know what? <laughs> I'm all over the shop today. So I'm gonna go back to the initialize tab and I already turned it into a poly mesh, didn't I? So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna bring him back again. So append, still, oh, I'm gonna delete that. <laughs> so the thing is, if you append a primitive into a current tool, it will come as a poly mesh. So I'm gonna have to select the cylinder from the tool palette like so, so that it, it is not a poly mesh tree and you can um, actually come down to the initialize palette and tweak this a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to change the VDVI, which stands for vertical, to something like that. And we can leave this at 32, it's fine. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, we can also reduce the size in the Y axis maybe as well, just from here. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that I don't have to manually delete all these poly loops around, around the base. Once I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go to Polymesh 3D and then I'm gonna copy a subtool. Uh, by the way, if you see this menu popping up, um, yeah, that's just the, the Wacom, um, one of the custom menus that I have in the Wacom and I have that mapped to my, uh, I think it's well, the, the top one of the, of the Wacom pen. So what most people use as a double click or a middle mouse button. And this has just allowed me to do certain actions that I do quite often that I like. I mean, I do them often, but they're not super important to have them in my UI. So like copying a subtool, going back to the polysphere and paste and paste, <laughs> paste the subtool. All right. Did it, I think it didn't do it. Let me just do it again. Copy, paste it from here. All right, all good. So now I'm in solo mode and this is the base. So it took a while, <laughs> but here it is. So I'm gonna bring in the um, C modeler, which is here. I'm gonna hover over an edge here, right click, and I'm gonna, well, it's already as an insert, a single edge loop is fine. I'm gonna click and drag. Um, I just wanna create something closer to the bottom so that it sharpens this a little bit and it gets rid of the sort of like jagged lines here when I, maybe let's do another one here just in case. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom. All right, so that looks good. So now we can turn dynamic subdivision. And that, that should be okay for the base. I mean, we can tweak it a little bit more, I guess, uh, in terms of the, the sharpness. We can bevel this even. So let's go ahead and bevel that. Just to add a little bit. I mean, you can also use the the Q grid and the coverage to, to create this effect. You don't have to physically add the poly loops. Let's have a look. All right, so that's much better. You can increase the, the smooth divide and all these settings are within, if you don't know about those, uh, within the geometry, you have subdivision, uh, dynamic subdivision right here. And this is just a, a preview, you can turn it on and off. So let's go ahead and increase the subdivide. So that's that's nice. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And what I might want to do is create a little bit of an indentation so that we can see a border around when we do the like the ground for this for this tree. So let's go ahead and tag these polygons just by holding the Alt key on your keyboard, and that assigns uh, temporarily. It temporarily assigns a polygroup, and that way we can simply um, by default it should be Q mesh. 
that's the um, the action the target could be a single poly but I'm just gonna send it set it to polygroup all and that's gonna take these ones all the the face that I tagged with the alt key and push that down about there and now we can go back to the similar menu and I'm gonna insert a couple more edges here and maybe do the same beveling that I did on the other side here. All right, so that's looking good. Very simple, nothing too extravagant at the moment. All right. So I just noticed that I'm, I'm missing quite a few buttons and a few things here. But again, that's because I haven't installed my macros and, and all that. So that's not a problem. It's even better, I think, for you guys so you can see exactly what I'm selecting all the menus and all that. So now that I have that as a, as a base, what I'll do is I'm going to select this sphere and I'm going to turn the other one off or because I'm solo mode, it doesn't really matter. And with this sphere, what I'll like to do is use a couple of brushes and a couple of techniques to create a very basic rock that we can then use to populate that base and, and we start creating the, the bonsai from the base. So we're going from the base, the ground or rocks, whatever the ground base is, and then bonsai, uh, tree, and then we go for the, for the leaves. Um, for the leaves and then maybe detail it depending on what we have time we we, we can produce uh, a variety of details details and then uh, test a few different techniques so let me just check the the chat um, do you speak Spanish uh, si sí, hablo español soy de Colombia entonces hablo español um, AQ, plants are hard to keep alive once you have 100 years old and have gone through generations. Imagine the pleasure doing a tree with that and from in whole life. Genuine. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the, the keys of the of the bonsai. My grand my granddad, he has a bonsai that it, I think it's like one of those massive trees. I forgot the name or I don't know the name in, in English. A <laughs> that's not That's not the name in English, but um, it's one of those massive trees and it's like this big. So the trunk and everything, all the details is like absolutely amazing, and he keeps it all alive like perfectly fine. It's been he he has it for he's been having it for like years, and it's really impressive all the grooming and everything that he has to do. Um, all right, so all good. Thanks for joining, in, guys. Um, if by the way, if you have questions uh, throughout this session, the same as previous ones, just yell in the chat and I'll try to I'll try to uh, come up with some answers <laughs> alright so where were we so I'm gonna take that the sphere we haven't done anything today I feel and I'm just gonna change to let's go ahead and oh I'm missing my custom brushes as well never mind so what I like to do first is let's go ahead and bring in the clay brush the clay builder brush and this time I'm not gonna use Sculptures Pro, I'm just gonna uh, use the good old Dynamesh, uh, but I'm going to scale this down so that the resolution is not as crazy. And also change that to 56, turn off symmetry, and let's just go ahead and redynamesh that. So you see it's quite, quite low poly, and that's good as a starting point. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna start doing. Um, some blocking of this of this rock. It's gonna be very simple. At least the the initial state of it is gonna be very very simple. And then as we progress, it, it's gonna start looking a little bit more interesting, I think. All right. Um. And just it's not gonna be like a sphere, a blobby blobby rock. It's gonna be quite sharp. But I'm just going to concentrate on the borders or all around it because then I'm going to flatten the top and the, and the bottom bit. Alright, I think I went too low in terms of the resolution. So instead of changing the resolution of the Dynamesh, because Dynamesh is a process depending on the scale of the, um, of the object, I can just simply scale this up a bit and redynamesh and we should have a bit more geometry. Alright. 
still I still have a bit you know what I'm gonna do a combination of those so size and resolution okay yeah I was going too extreme with a with a low resolution so let's just do this um, this doesn't have to be perfect I could be using the the rock brushes that I that I made for zebras like the rock pack and that allows you to create the details straight away as, a, as you sculpt um, so if you want to check them out I would say to go to the zebras guides website however it is currently down so the zebras guides website is down because I'm doing some of the final bits and pieces uh, so that I can finally release the brand new zebras guides 2.0 so it's pretty exciting um, but right now if you go into the zebras guides it just gives you a you know like a coming soon landing page um, there's a little bit of a, a mess still behind the scenes so this this weekend I'm gonna be um, working at it and hopefully next week I can release the brand new website all right so this doesn't look any anything um, very interesting at all so what I'll do is I'm gonna bring in the damp standard brush and I'm gonna just create some vertical crevices like so I know that this doesn't look like a rock um, I'm just trying to set up some some basic shapes some um, some how do you call it maybe not the formations but um, let's just call it some random shapes at the moment um, and this we will turn it into a, a, a good looking rock I hope in just a minute but for now we just need to have something to go for all right so that should be good so in other words if we're aiming to do like a pumpkin kind of thing we should we should, we should be good to, to start with the with the rock all right so next thing I want to do is bring bring the layer brush so L for the layer brush now let's try that out um, I'm gonna increase the intensity a bit and the size of the brush and the same thing that I've been doing just very Kind of like randomly apply this maybe let's run the dynamic process again all right so as you can see this is not um, a very well planned uh, rock we just develop it as we go and i'm not following any reference at the moment so wh whatever looks good, that's what we go for. All right, let's do another redynamish. So now we have some interesting details. Again, nothing, nothing too uh, extreme as yet. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is perhaps uh, bring in the slash curve, or the slash brush, sorry, which should be under the S slash three. That's the one. And let's go ahead and just do the same thing that we did with the damp standard brush, but this time let's introduce a couple of more diagonal lines. All right. And the idea with this sort of method that I'm following, which is not necessarily the, the usual sculpt of the rock, um, I'm trying to get something very, very random. Um, and the idea with these lines is that they will suggest some of the of the cracks in the rock later on So don't place if, if you're following along you don't need to place them exactly um, With an intention I guess this is still sort of sketching and, and doodling and, and of course you can press the all key and sort of invert the effect a bit if you want But for now, I think we are good to go all right, so I'm going to run a clay polish really quickly and that should sort of sharpen those edges a bit. So that looks good. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. We can even make the, the edges a little bit sharper. Uh, if we go under the clay polish sub tab right here, you can increase this edge contrast. So let me just undo what I did so you can see what I mean. So I'm going to increase that edge all the way to 100. Uh, again, 
if if you sort of like follow the the past couple of streams, um, you might notice that I like to push like all the settings and all the sliders to the limit, um, and that way I have a, a a much better understanding and representation of what the tools do. And once I have that understanding, I can just dial it back. Um, so this is just to show you guys that if you put the the edge slider all the way to 100 and do the clay polish, you'll get this kind of like exaggerated effect, right? So obviously this looks horrible, but it gives you a good understanding of what the tool does, right? So basically ZBrush maybe here that we only had square polygons, like so. So ZBrush will take some of those faceted um, lines or the more crevices, the more um, pronounced crevices and will sharp them, sharp them quite a bit when they run, when Sirius runs the clay polish. So now that we have that understanding, if we go back a bit, let's just turn it to maybe 12 or 15, run the clay polish and this is what we get. And that's pretty good, but we don't have enough resolution. So we can do two things. We can increase the dynamic resolution before we run the clay builder process, uh, the clay polish process, or we can just leave it as it is and and then just continue working um, over the top of this. So I think that might be an option. Um, however, let me just undo that. I'm gonna increase the dynamic resolution and I'm going to redynamic. So now we have more resolution at 384. It's quite a bit and then clay polish. So you'll see because we have more resolution and more polygons, now this slider needs to be tweaked a bit. So let's go back to maybe 10, that's still too much, undo that. Uh, by the way, if you if you hover most of the, slide, the sliders in ZBrush, if you hover over the top or you click on the slider and then hover over the top, um, another one will, should appear, maybe not in this one. Um, I'll show you in another one, so the formation palette. Uh, if I were to increase the size of this sphere, you can click on the top and it should give you one. Why is it not working? Ah, it's not important for what we're doing. I'll show you when it when it happens. <laughs> clay polish. All right, so I'm gonna clear that mask because that clay polish will automatically mask out some, some areas. And I think we are good to continue. So this is gonna be the base of that rock and most of these detail is, details are going to actually disappear once we um, refine it. So in order to sort of flatten this um, bottom and the top, what we can do is, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and add some more, more variation. So I'm gonna bring in the, the Trim Dynamic. So the Trim Dynamic brush works really, really good for doing this type of rock formations, uh, especially if you're going for a stylized effect. So I'm just gonna flatten some, some of these areas and again, because we're doing this this bonsai, or the idea is to do this bonsai um, scene, uh, I think I'm gonna go for something quite stylized. So it's it's all right to use this type of brushes at the moment. So I'm destroying a lot of these um, details, but it doesn't matter. It's still, this is a, a sketching this is part of the sketching process. We haven't committed to do anything. This might change completely yet, so not a big deal. I'll increase that size of that brush. Um, I think at this point, maybe I should mention that something that I see quite often is that people get kind of like discouraged once, um, once, once they start working in ZBrush and they don't quite get what they want. Um, and that could be, this could be a, a good example of it. So if I'm trying to do a rock and I'm just trying all these things and this is the result that I'm getting, it would be quite frustrating because this doesn't look like a rock at all um, or not quite yet. But my point is that if you just keep at it and just trying to, to develop it, um, just give it some time and it will start to take some shape. Like anything, it just takes time. Um, what, I'm, what I'm doing here with this technique, or what I, what I think that I want to achieve is a more sort of like random series of shapes once I shape, what, a more random series of volumes when I, once I shape the, the, proper, um, the proper rock. So 
bear with me. This is not gonna look like that, hopefully. Or maybe I'm just talking rubbish. Maybe it's not gonna look cool at all. But anyway, um, this is what I've been doing with the trim dynamic. Just flatten some planes um, to define those edges a bit more in some areas. Uh, one thing I want to do is go into the preference, quick save, and I'm gonna increase this maximum duration so that I don't get that auto save as often. All right, let me just check the chat and then we proceed with this rock. Um, hey Kyle. Is everyone all good? All right, no questions or anything so far, so we're good to go. So now the next step um, that I would probably do is I'm gonna select the mask lasso brush. And this is a cool technique uh, that you can you can use to create like a variety of, of, um, of shapes and uh, for characters as, as well. But for rocks it's quite interesting because you can just select a region like that. Or, and as you can see, I try to follow this crevice or this pattern that I did here. And now that I have that, I can bring in the move brush, make sure that AccuCurve is enabled and AccuCurve is under the brush uh, depth curve here, this AccuCurve, uh, which allows you to give you, uh, it gives you more control with the pointy sort of um, shapes. It just creates a more pointy, a spiky point when you move. So. Now that I have this mask, I'm gonna increase the brush size quite a bit, and then I'm gonna push this in like so. Maybe invert the selection, and then just push this one out. All right, so that creates a bit of contrast in here. Remove that mask, and let's go ahead and do another one, maybe here. just with the mask areas we, we can accentuate these these crevices a bit more and obviously you can play with the with the size of your brush and that also changes the the, the influence of the amount of influence that the that move brush would have. All right, so that's starting to create some nice shapes in there. Let's go ahead and do another one here. And I'm gonna try to push from the top bit so that it starts to lose that sort of rounded shape that we initially went for and create a more natural, a natural line here. So I'm gonna remove that, do another mask in here. that in maybe a little bit and let's do another one here just in on the top of the one that we just did and that kind of help us to do that sort of layering effect in some rocks again um, if you want to do something a little bit more realistic and more accurate probably it's always a good idea to use references I'm not using any at the moment so this might not be the most accurate rock formation but this is really all we need. Let's go ahead and do a couple more masks, maybe here. Oops. Wrong button. And we can sort of break this line a little bit as well. All right, so that's looking all right. Um, the next thing I want to do, because we stretch the polygons quite a bit, is to probably, let's go ahead and do a quick check from the top and let's move some points here so that it has more of a sharper edge around there. All right, so let's go ahead and increase the resolution just a little bit more and let's run a dynamesh process. So now we have a more consistent or even topology 
so that's what we wanted good and let's go ahead and bring in the gizmo 3d and then we're going to flatten these these areas let's go ahead and select the cog icon and i always lose flatten yeah the third one from the left from top to bottom and with these cones here we can just flatten this a little bit all right click on the cog icon and accept so now we have this sort of flat rock formation still not quite detailed yet um, but that's all right we can now go ahead and bring in the damp sander brush and we can start detailing this a little bit not too much because this is going to be um, decimated anyway so we're going to lose quite a bit of the detail anyway so I just want to refine some of the shapes that the the processes that we went through kind of like suggest at the moment and sort of so I'm not doing anything that is new to the structure of this um, of this rock formation I'm kind of like accentuating the fact that you know we did some some work on some areas and I just want to make sure that they're nice and crisp all right so as you can see for the most part all those lines that we did initially as a kind of like a sketch are a good reference point to I mean if you follow them um, it gives you a good result straight away because they're already part of the of the bigger forms of the bigger shapes so we can just stick with that so for example here this area this is clearly um, a result of the of the of the layer brush so it's still there but you can obviously refine that and integrate it with other with the rest of the shapes basically so I'm just gonna sharpen those crevices there um, and then bring in the uh, opposite effect of the damp sander brush which is holding alt and that crisps out that area all right so I'm gonna try to do this a little bit faster so that this stream is not about just making a rock because that's quite boring I think um, unless you guys want it but I think I'm gonna move faster now and continue with the rest because the once you have this is basically building the assets that we're gonna use and once they have once you have the assets then the compositing of the scene becomes very very attractive it's a, it's a really cool process but obviously before you do that you need to have your assets All right, I'm gonna finish a, a bit of a detailing pace, uh, phase here. And if you guys have any questions, I'll check the chat in just a bit. Another, another brush that you can use um, during this stage is the, the one that I used previously, which is the slash, the slash curve. Or alternatively, um, you can also use, it's called, let me just see if I have it here. You can use uh, the chisel brush, but that will give you a very sharp result. So up to you, depending on which one you want. So I'm gonna stick with, let's go ahead and change that to slash curve, just to, sorry, slash brush, slash three brush, just to give you an idea of what it does. Um, just give you a, a way sharper kind of like effect without the pinching I think but I, I might be wrong all right so this is good this is kind of like what I'm after uh, we can also bring in the layer brush let's select that just to finish up this rock um, and a really cool trick about the layer brush is that you can save uh, morph target. So right now this is the effect that you'll get. So if I do this and I let go and then come back again and try to do it, you'll see that overlap of the layer brush because it's basically um, Sibrish is just pushing this value to to a value of one or it's turning it on. And sorry, the first one. Let me just do it again to explain that bit. 
So with the layer brush, this is a value of one uh, for ZBrush. When I do the same thing, it's a value of one from the uh, surface normal. So if I do this, it's gonna be one around this area, but as soon as I change that surface normal, this is gonna be a value of one from the previous stroke. So uh, that's not what I want for this case. So if you store a morph target like that, and then you use the, the layer brush, then Sirius will store that sort of value. And you can still see a, a bit of a difference here, and that is because I'm using the pressure sensitivity as well. But if you have this to 100%, it shouldn't be a problem. I still use the pressure sensitivity, so not the best example, but you know what I mean? Just storing the morph target really, really helps. I'm gonna delete it and do it again just in case. And that way, with a lower intensity as well, I can do these type of things and refine things a bit more, especially in the areas that uh, are look a little bit wobbly and not very rock-like. And if we use this in the combination with the trim dynamic or even the edge polish, we should get a pretty nice result. And with this brush, with the layer brush, I'm not, as you can see, I'm not refining anything. I'm just adding a little bit of volume to the areas that look um, a bit wonky. And let's go ahead and run the clay polish at zero edge detection and see what that gives us. So I'm gonna run the clay polish. All right, that looks, that looks good. Let's invert that. And you'll see, I didn't, I didn't get rid of the, of the mask, and you'll see that after running the clay polish, uh, ZBrush automatically masked out this region, actually this region, uh, which is just a mask of the detected edges. Um, so if you invert the mask, you still have this really nice mask, and we can go to the masking options, and we can sharpen that mask. So let's go ahead and sharpen mask. Um, we lost a little bit of the details there, but that's all right. Maybe let's undo that. Let's not sharpen that. And let's bring in the, the move again, the move brush. And we can use this to sort of push in those crevices or push them out. And that's if you wanna get some like extra details for free. Obviously this will be better if you have more, more resolution. And instead of doing this manually, just to save some time, what I'll do is I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna hide the mask, so I still have it. And I'm gonna use the inflate slider. Just push them in a little bit. Right, so that gives you some extra details. I don't know if that's gonna look good. I'm gonna run another clay polish. Oops, forgot to clear the mask. and clay polish. Uh, maybe that went too far in terms of the details and I don't have enough resolution, so let's just undo that. And we're gonna leave it as it, as it is. But it's just another technique to, or another process to keep in mind. So just to finish up, I'm gonna bring the trim dynamic and I'm gonna, let's clear the mask of those edges and I'm gonna polish some of these edges here at the top, um, mainly because I want to, you know, make it a little bit more organic. Not have a, not have this sharp, sharp line here at the border. In some areas, it's good. Like in here, just keep it, keep it, um, keep the variety, I guess. And I'm gonna concentrate to do it only in the top area, not at the bottom. The bottom doesn't really matter at this point. We won't be using it, or it won't be visible. Let's bring in the clay builder brush. I'm just gonna exaggerate this a tiny bit. And bring back the trim dynamic, polish that edge. So, all right. So we get in there, 
I know this is maybe next time I will if you guys don't want to see this type of things I'll just bring in some assets and have them ready for the next time because uh, I know this once once you kind of learn the basic technique or the the workflow of of what I'm doing then it becomes kind of like tedious to to see uh, and watch this repetitive action but we'll see how we go I'm just using the trim dynamic brush again to polish some of the areas um, like here for example after the the clay polish we can even sharpen those edges a little bit more here as well and again I'm going for something kind of stylized so it, this looks all right for what we're doing and to be honest this is not gonna be even the like the main feature or the main uh, focus of of the project or the little scene that we're gonna create so I'm just spending way too much time on this all right so we have this kind of all right looking rock we can definitely do some more changes uh, for example with the have a look where is it uh, edge polish we can just flatten some more areas to reduce the amount of um, of details and just add a little bit of contrast as well between the different planes so I think that's that's looking good maybe also here at the top if you would like to flatten this area um, a good tip that I can give you with this brush is if you start um, sort of flattening this area and then you hold control without releasing the click that basically will constrain that edge polish effect to the original or to the polygon that you first touched or the first um, clicked on so it just sort of constrained it to the normal maybe I'll give you another example here so that I repeat that let me just do that let's say that I want to polish only this area without affecting the edge so you'll see if I go over this it kind of like flatten that edge as well so if I want to not do that what I can do is start here to do the flattening effect and I haven't released my my mouse and then hold control and that will constrain it to or try to respect that edge so you'll see based on the on the angle that I clicked on originally it kind of respected that that edge so this is a really cool trick for especially if you're doing hard surface modeling as well but for this type of thing is very useful as well all right so I think we're done um, with this what I like to do is it feels that the curve of this is going inwards in here the same as here and I want the opposite so that's a very easy change let's go ahead and bring in the gizmo click on the cog icon, cog icon and then let's go for the taper effect and I'm just gonna push this one out like so just a tiny bit maybe push this one in why not all right so I can see most of the base from the top so that's what I'm after let's click on accept all right so this is not necessarily the rock the finished rock this is just a piece that we're gonna use to build the proper rock and the base so I'm gonna, just gonna check the chat really quickly See what's going on what are you guys saying all right um, what will this be so this is gonna be uh, kind of like a bonsai we're starting it we started with the with the base or so some creating some assets to to build a, a proper mini scene um so if you, if you're not familiar with it with the term diorama it's just like a very small kind of like a maquette where you put in some of the details of the main elements of a scene that you want to present it's like a concept scene type of thing that's what i like it because it's sort of contained um i'm desperate to get to know a good way to render in zbrush do you have any tips and tricks i do I do have a few things um, fortunately this this one wasn't planned to be a rendering session but 
the best tip I can give you is there are three things that you need to consider when you render in ZBrush. One is the actual BPR render or the render settings, so the shadow and, and all that. Uh, the second one is the material, obviously, and the third one are the lights. So all those three things need to be combined or be balanced in order to get a, a good looking render. Um, so for example, the light, if you're using a matcap, the one that the materials in ZBrush that have the, the capture of the image or they capture the, the lighting in an image. Um, so those ones, for example, just very quickly, I'll show you. So if you select a, So if you select any of these materials here, the ones that said matcap, they all have lighting embedded into it uh, or as part of the image. So if I select, for example, the, what's a good example? Um, this silver foil, for example, and we go to the material palette here at the top, um, you'll see that this particular material under the modifiers tab, you have this image. So this is the image that is Sort of driving the entire um, the entire lighting, you see that the very concentrated sharp um, specular is almost right in the middle, and that's all just in an image. So you can potentially change this image to whatever you want and customize the the lighting just with an image. And that's what I've done with most of my matcap materials. Um, again, I would say go to the zeros guys and get it, but it's down at the moment while I finish all the the bits and pieces. But maybe next week. Um, I will I will show you. So the reason I'm saying this is important is that is because if you for rendering at least if you select something like the gold, right? So this gold has the specular slightly to the left of the image, so the lighting is coming from that direction, right? So no matter how you position the lights in ZBrush, if you're using a matcap, it won't affect the the render because the lighting is coming from the material itself. However, because you're using, I'm guessing, um, you're probably using shadows and cast shadows, those shadows are going to be coming from the actual light. So my point being is that if you want to, oh, my point that, uh, about the material, the lighting and the rendering settings is that all needs to be balanced. So in this particular case, you will have to take the, the light or ideally you'll take the light and try to position the light so that it matches the specular or the highlight of that particular matcap. So that way the cast shadows produced by the render setting are going to match the shadows and the ambient lighting and everything from the from the matcap. Um, and then the third thing is just uh, playing with the you know the values of the render settings like how, how soft you want the shadow to be again if you want to match the, the matcap. So you need a few things to consider in this scenario. Uh, it's not complicated, you just need to get your, your head around how it works, but um, it's, it is pretty easy. In fact, if you if you search for ZBrush material, maybe I can just put a link here. Um, I, I released a, a mini pack of material that also come with the project. So in other words, if, if you just load one of the projects, all the lighting material and render settings are ready to go. You just need to click render and it should give you a, a pretty decent result. So it's called ZBrush Form Material Pack. So because the ZBrush guys is down, I'll just point to a different one. Let's have a look. So I think ADLV, um, if, you know, if you guys know the ADLV website, uh, here we go. Uh, but it's pointing to the ZBrush guys. So. Hmm. One second. All right, I got it. So I'll put it in here if you're interested in check it out. Just a bunch of materials and render scenes. So again, you just need to load your model and just render. That's it. All right, so let's move on and let's make this thing interesting. 
So the first thing I want to do, let's do a quick save. So now that I have this, this mesh, I want to turn it into an asset that I can reuse. So the first thing I want to do is duplicate that. Right, so we have that one at the top. And I want to reduce the amount of polygons because we're going to turn the, this into an insert brush. So let's go ahead and we currently have 377 points. I'm going to bring in the C plugin menu, we'll call it here, and expand the decimation master. I'm going to do a quick pre process current. So Sirius is going to analyze the, the current mesh and then we can decimated quite a bit, maybe five to 10%. And that's the reason why I say doing too many details at this stage is it's kind of like counterintuitive if we're gonna remove them altogether. Uh, let's go ahead and change that to maybe 10 to start with, decimate. So that did a pretty good job. Um, still quite a bit of polygons. I wanna try to put this down to maybe 10 if I can. So let's undo that and Let's see 5%, that's a little bit extreme in this case, but 20,000 is not too bad. And it sort of kept the, the forms quite well. Um, if we wanna stylize this even more, we can push it to, let's say 2%. This is probably not gonna work, but let's give it a go. Let's image current. All right, that's not too bad. Actually did a pretty good job. So now I have 7,000 polygons. That's still a fair bit for an insert mesh, but we're not gonna use this too many times. So I think it works. Alrighty, so now that we have that, I'm gonna position the camera from the top and make sure that perspective is off. And so I'm gonna show you the process of how to uh, create that insert brush and tweak it a little bit so that we can reuse it as an asset. All right, so let's go ahead and from the top with perspective off, click on the brush palette and let's go into create insert mesh here and create new and that's it that's the whole process so uh, now that we have this we can tweak it so if i click in here you'll see it creates that rock from the from the bottom so what i want to do for this particular brush is make sure that the insert is not happening right from the bottom but like a little bit inside and that way we can create a really nice layering effect of the rocks so to do that I'm just gonna push this um, brush placement down. And this one, you can find it under the brush palette and uh, depth. Here, you can play with this here. I just have it here on my in my UI. So let's drag that in. And you'll see that it's sort of right in the middle, in the middle line. So that's good, but I still want to push it a little bit more inside. So let's try it again. So you see by doing this with the same brush, we, cre we create this sort of like um, stared effect that is gonna end up being quite useful. And also these extra details that the intersection of the two meshes kind of give us to create a nice looking result. So like I said, it's it's all about like giving it time. You start working uh, step, by, step by step and then you produce uh, something very complex, but start simple and then you just move on. So that should be, um, that should be good. I think that's, that's what I'm looking for. All right. Now, the other thing is, no, I think we're good. I think we're just gonna keep it simple. Um, so that, that's the whole process of creating the insert brush. I'm gonna remove that or remove the mask in here. Um, turn that off. And we go back to the original base that we did with the cylinder and I have dynamic subdivision. So I'm gonna turn dynamic subdivision off for the time being. And what I'd like to do is maybe, oh no, just leave it like that. So I'm gonna start inserting those rocks in here, in the actual base. And if you change the intensity of the brush, so right now, this is what it's giving us. If we reduce the intensity, it will change the, the height of that. So just to start with, what I'll do is I'm gonna leave it at 30 and I'm just gonna quickly also we can turn solo off so that when we drag it doesn't hide the rest of the mesh so you'll see this is how I'm gonna create the the base I, I still think that this is 
not enough, but let's don't do that. Push the intensity up a bit. Um, I want to get closer to the edge that we created here. So um, you know what, 50 was fine, or 40 was fine. Because then what we can do is just push this one up. All right, so now that we're set, we have our base and we have our insert brush. So I'm going to start dragging these um, trying to change the the shapes a bit, sorry, the sizes, so that I, I can keep that a bit inconsistent. And if you notice, I'm just clicking and dragging from the base itself, not on the rocks, on the rocks, because uh, the base has a consistent flat sort of um, series of polygons here. So I'm I'm sure that what I'm dragging is going to be sort of like flat. All right, so this is going to be kind of like the the base. Um, I'm going to clear the mask. And if I turn polyframe, you see each one of those rocks have um, its own polygroup and the base as well. However, the base itself, because we use the C modeler, every time that we did an action, it created a polygroup. So really easily, what I'll do is auto group everything and Sivers will check whatever doesn't have continuity in the topology and assign a polygroup. So now I can hold control and shift and click, oops, not that one, the base. It's going to be hard to find it. All right. That, that. So now I have isolated the base and the rocks and we can go to the split menu and it's split hidden. So that way we have, if we turn it on, actually, we have now these two subtools, one with the rocks and one with the base. So now that we have the rocks, uh, I can turn off polyframe. I'm going to bring in the gizmo 3D and then I'm I can push this and scale it down a bit. Oops, let's center that pivot. Scale it down a bit. Like so. And let's just push that one up a bit as well. So we have the base almost there. Maybe scale it up. All right, so we have, a, I think, a good starting point here. And then what we can do is we're going to clip everything that is outside that polygon or that sort of circular area. Um, but I think I want to do that after I do a bit more of, of work on the base. So again, I'm still having the this one selected, this um, the rock sort of brush that we created. This time I'm going to change this to be 100% so that it has the full length or the full height of that original rock. And I'm just going to click and drag in here. Um, we can even push this one now up a bit more so that it creates, you know, this, this sort of effect. And I'm just, as I place these ones, I'm just trying to think a little bit about the, like the overall look of where I want the, the little bonsai to grow from. So I think, the main area obviously would be here. I'm just going to push this one up a bit. Maybe that's too much. And just trying to find a, a nice angle as I rotate these things. Push this one down a bit. So you'll see with a single rock, with a single brush or a single rock, we, we managed to create something that looks a little bit more complex definitely more complex than, than what we originally had. So it's a, a really simple but easy technique. Um, when, when, once you drag any insert brush, Sivrush automatically masks out, masks out the rest. Um, you can tweak that in the preferences as well, but um, I like it because then allows you to manipulate this individually. So I can even, you, know, you can even rotate things around just to make things a bit more interesting. All right, um, I just want to do another one here. Oops. And of course, after this, you can totally detail this even more, right? So the reason I, I started just with this is because now I have the base, I can easily create a, a, a nice sort of pattern for the roots and, and other, thing, other things for, the, for this mini, mini scene. 
So I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to clear the mask and you'll see I have something that looks more like it, like the ground. Um, so there's a couple of things that I still need to do. One is we need to get rid of these parts that are sort of like sticking out, especially here at the back. And in fact, if we go at the bottom, I want to make sure that I keep these areas of the big, um, the big rocks. So I'm going to push this one in a bit and then just adjust the placement of that big rock. All right. Um, again, so to clip this area, we're going to actually use the clip brushes. Hopefully they will work fine in this case. And what we can do is hold control and shift and I have it here, but it's not the one that we need. So control and shift, click on the brush uh, thumbnail and I'm going to use the trim slice. Actually, we need the, this one, the clip circle center, center. I'm going to try to be here in the center and I'm going to just, whoops, hold control and shift in the center, click and drag. And whoops, it's not right in the middle, but that did the job. So let's undo that. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it from the bottom so that it's easy to see the center. So it's control and shift, click and drag. And that's roughly in the center. It's not necessarily there, but we move it. We'll move it around. So that sort of clipped everything, but we need to move this entire thing down. Let's do it again. All right, something like that. I mean, if you like the kind of the jagged edges and the things sticking out, by all means, go for it. Just want to keep everything contained within these little, these little things, this little base. Um, and obviously we can fix things like that. Uh, for the time being, I'm happy with how this looks. So I'm not gonna change that. And the next thing I wanna do is flatten this so that we don't have rocks or anything sticking outside of the base. So for that, again, it's very easily, we can use the clip brush again, but this time select the clip curve and drag from left to right, holding control and shift. Oops, nope, the other way around from right to left. Uh, because we want the shadow of that line to point downward so that it clips everything that is on that side of the of the shadow line. All right, so this is looking pretty good. We can select the move brush and do some minor tweaking, you know, just pushing things in or out. If you want to just refine the placement of this uh, of these rocks. I'm not going to spend too much time in here because I think it looks for the most part it looks good. Um, and I want to start doing the, the bonsai. The bonsai is going to take a little bit of, um, of time, but we're going at a pretty good um, rate. All right, so the next thing I want to do as well is currently this is um, a subtool that has almost 200,000 polygons. So that's that's not too bad. Zbrush can handle it quite easily, but there's heaps of geometry that is sort of hidden in here that I'm not using and nobody's gonna even see it. So why have it? Um, if I go into solo mode and let me let me just change to the selection tool and I'm gonna hold control and shift and hide half of this. And I'm gonna also turn double so you can see inside. You'll see that inside it's kind of like a mess. Right, so all these polygons, if I turn polyframe on, all these polygons inside are totally, totally um, useless. And I just had an idea <laughs> for a, um, you know what, this is gonna be something interesting. If I have time at the end, again, I can show you a, a cool technique. So before I do anything, because I, I just thought about something that you guys might find interesting, um, I'm going to duplicate this so now I have three, um, three subtools that are kind of like useless, useless at the moment. One was the original test for the brush. The other one was the original mesh to we, that we used to create the brush. And this third one is just the, the rocks that we created. But the fourth one is the one that I'm going to actually use. So going back on track, um, all these meshes have a bunch of geometry that is useless. So you can run a dynamesh process and that will do, that will work just fine. But I want to keep 
all that decimation that we already did so that we don't add or create additional geometry in places that we won't need it, like in the flat areas of this rock formation. So the easiest way to do it, and it's something that um, I, haven't many, I haven't seen many people using it, uh, at least for this purpose, and it's using the union or remesh by union, and it's a really, really handy process that came with the introduction of booleans, if I'm not mistaken, so in 4R8. Um, so what this does, if I bring in the Gizmo 3D, if you click on the cog icon here, it's called remesh by union. So what this does is it will analyze the mesh and it basically runs a uh, the default boolean operation, which is union. So if I click on that, Sirius is going to analyze that mesh and produce that, so like this cage, and you see it doesn't have any controls because it's just that process. It's kind of like the equivalent of going to the booleans palette, create it, analyze it, uh, produce the mesh, copy and paste it back in, but in just one click. So let's click on that cog icon, accept, and you'll see that from 20, uh, 200,000 we came down to um, 88,000. And if I go inside, you'll see now that this is completely hollow. Okay? Let's just go back. So now we have some areas that have that are giving us some problems here. And the reason why this is happening is for two things. One, because when we dragged in the polygons, there are coplanar um, faces, so that that will produce a problem for the for the booleans. Um, fortunately, it's not too bad. Uh, we can do a few things, and I'll show you how to fix this really quickly. The first one is I want to close holes, so I have a menu in the menu here, um, close holes here. So I'm going to close holes, and that would close that. Uh, but it's for you guys should be on the modified topology close holes this one right here and and that sort of fixes all those open bits and pieces now the second problem that we have with this particular piece is that we have this bunch of geometry that you know doesn't do anything for us so another thing that we can do is go ahead and mask this oops change that mask to the mask 10 lasso Control, click and drag, and then I'm going to mask everything but that bottom bit. And what's great about this, um, for example, this technique is that I'm, I'm going to be using the Sculptures Pro, by the way. And what's great about this is that it works with masking, so we don't have to worry about what's being masked. And now with the Sculptures Pro enabled, I'm going to hold Shift to access that, um, that brush, increase the brush size quite a bit, and just basically paint less resolution. That's it. I mean, you can be a bit more careful than what I just did. Um, I'm going to mask around these areas as well so that we don't mess with the with the nice silhouette that we have already. Ah, uh, my bad. Undo, undo that. All right, so we get in there. And before I close that mask, I'm going to hold Alt. No, that's not what I wanted. You know what? I just do it manually a little bit more carefully. So reduce the brush size. So this is kind of like the equivalent of using the dynamic process. The difference, obviously, is that you have like manual control of where to place it. So I really. I really like this technique. And you can potentially do it here, but the, here is a, a good distribution of polygons. And just by doing that, oops, I think I overdid it here. Yeah, that's better. Let me just mask that area out. All right, and do it one more time here. All right. And we reduce this by 20,000 polygons, so it's all good. Let's get out of solo mode now we have this piece and we can turn the the base again to dynamic subdivision and we have something that looks quite nice um, now the the other thing that I can give you like another tip that I can give you at this point before I move into the, the tree is if you want to detail the the bottom part as well now that you have this decimated instead of using decimated instead of using the dynamic process again you can simply enable the Sculptures Pro, um, and with a smaller brush, you can just 
you know, add all the details that you want. You don't have to. And that's the great thing about Sculptures Pro. You can just detail whatever you want um, specifically without affecting the rest, the rest of the mesh. All right, I'm going to start with the next technique, uh, which is using C-spheres. And I'm going to show you how I, how I build the trunk or the base of the, the bonsai. I'm going to check the chat really quickly. It's all good. Uh, can, you, can you move clip brushes with the space bar? Uh, yes, you can. The, the only reason I didn't do it during that process is because um, I don't have the keyboard next to me. I'm using the control, the remote control from the Cintiq. And I have the control and shift map to a single button and the space bar is not near that one. <laughs> so it, w it will look quite weird me trying to just hold those two controls uh, because it's not something that I often do, um, at least in this scenario. But you can totally do it. You just press spacebar and, and reposition it. Can you trim the bottom off and then close hole again? Yep. Okay. So I'm just. I think I just re answered those questions as I go as I went through the process. I just bought one tutorial from you. Amazing work and huge amount of knowledge. Paulo, check it out. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad you like it. I guess you you got the the clothes and drapery. That's really the only tutorial tutorial is like a mini course that I have for sale the rest are free so if, if, if you bought it from somewhere else don't because they, they should be free and people sometimes just steal it and resell it not sometimes I mean I've seen it once done it once um, I don't want to um, say something wrong but anyway um, cool so let's go ahead and start with the next thing So for the next thing, what I'll do is I'm gonna append a C-sphere. So let's go do a quick save. And by the way, this process is been, it's taking us ages, but once you know it, I mean, because I'm showing you how to how this what the steps are. Uh, once you know this, you can just run with this and do this type of thing really really quickly. So I'm gonna append a C-sphere, and this is my C-sphere. I'm gonna use the move tool or the move option to sort of place this where I want it to start growing the, the, the tree. I'm going to scale it down like that or maybe a bit less and move it again. So what I'm thinking with this is to just create something that sort of twirls around and creates that sort of like bonsai shape of most of the bonsais that you would find um, online look like uh, the, the ones that I've seen actually um, and they look very interesting so once you have the C-sphere you can just do this so I'm gonna do uh, maybe two maybe like five spheres and that should define the structure so I'm gonna click one here and this is gonna be kinda like the tip I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush as well so that I don't have too much influence and this one will define Oops move brush this one will define the the height of the of the tree and where I want this tree to finish okay so I have that one ready I'm going to close uh, click on the draw draw menu and I'm gonna add three more along the way so one two three maybe four that should be enough and now with the move brush what I can do is start playing around to create that sort of like squiggly doodly shape so I can move or rotate oops that's not what I wanted to do I can move one of these ones like so all right and that would help me define that that line so this is just the the, the origin the initial structure it doesn't have to be that precise or, or anything like that uh, we're gonna add more more light, uh, more C spheres. The only thing that I want to keep in mind is that this doesn't go too far out of the of the borders of the of the base. We'll just reserve that for the for the actual branches if we get to the, do them. All right, so that looks good from this angle, but obviously from this side it looks quite boring. So now that we have that as we have this initial shape, we can also push this like so and start working on 
on a more interesting shape for the bonsai. So I want to do something that sort of covers the, uh, for the most part, the, the entire base. And again, this is quite blocky right now, but we are going to make it more interesting just by adding some more spheres. So let's go ahead and do draw. And maybe let's add another one in between each part. Like so, and let's go into the scale and I'm going to scale this down now that I know that this is going to be sort of like the tip of the, the bonsai. Oops. Um, and I, in this case, I use the, the C spheres not just as an armature to build the mesh. I actually try to get it as close as, as the mesh that I want to create just using the, the C spheres. And this is quite a, a handy process. You'll see why in a second. So with the move brush, or move brush, sorry, move tool, I'm going to try to refine this a bit more. I don't want to make it too smooth. I also want to keep that sort of like sharp corners on the on the shape as well. So that helps with the with the overall um, feel to it. Um, one thing I want to do maybe is rotate this a bit a bit in here and then up a bit. And then we can just simplify this. All right. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and add a few more spheres so that this, these next spheres that I'm going to add are not necessarily to add more sort of complexity or corners to the to the original or to this armature. They're more to add, it's, they're, they're just spheres to add more geometry to the overall shape. Um, and once we create the adaptive skin, that will have some impact. So let's click and drag here. We can click, 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 click. A couple more, maybe another one in here. And go back to the move brush and just try to reposition these ones. I mean, these are not going to give them too much of a change in the shape, but if it looks too straight, then it's going to be, it's going to look odd. So I'm just going to try to keep it fluid and organic. Maybe I just need a couple more here at the top. And I think I missed one. No, no, it's fine. It's all good. All right, so this is the base of of the tree, or like the idea of it. Um, and I think it just follows like a nice Z shape. So there you go, for ZBrush. Um, so yeah, we'll keep it like that. And now we can add some branches. I'm going to keep this one very, very small. And this is something that helps, that really helps with the, the whole idea uh, of the bonsai um, to play with the proportions. Because the, generally speaking, um, from, from my own experience, I've seen like the bonsais that I've seen or researched online, um, that's the case. I don't know if it is true for all. Um, the, the trunk needs, tends to be like really, really thick but the branches are quite small and that's what gives away a little bit like the, the scale of the of these bonsai tree. So I'm going to draw a few here. So I'm going to click one and these initials, oops, let's undo that. I'm going to click and drag like so. And this in initial C sphere is going to be the base of where that branch, that tree sort of branches out and it's going to determine the thickness of that next um, next branch. So I'm going to do the same thing on top, just one to create the the tip of it. I'm going to do another one here, another one here. I forgot to add the next one, the tip and the tip here. Let's where you see. I think maybe another one here. that and definitely one here whoops 
All right. And maybe a couple more here for the for the sort of like top area of the of the tree. All right. So this one allows you to really quickly see the placement um, and see if that's what you you're looking for, uh, and then just refine the placement just by using the move brush. I'm going to reduce the size. To one, and that way you don't you don't tweak or you don't influence the the original or like the base of that branch. So I can just do this type of things and establish the sort of the length of what I want this branch to be, and just keep it as simple as just two CCs, one for the base and one for the tip of of the branch. Uh, really helps me to see if the placement and the and what I, what what these branches are are actually helping the overall scene and and the because this is ultimately a composition right so it just helps me to keep an eye on that as well okay I feel that maybe I don't know I think this one is breaking things a bit. So what I'll do is I'm going to push it to the other side and make it a little bit bigger because this one is one this particular branch is closer to the base so it could still be one of the big ones I think all right so let's say that I'm happy with this um, just gonna play with the placement of this um, the next thing would be to do the same process that I did over the the main um, trunk of the tree but on the little branches I'm not gonna do it too like I'm not gonna do too many of those, but just to give you an idea, go to the draw and I'm gonna draw a few. Again, the placement of these are not super accurate, just to have something to add more geometry to it. Oops, I forgot to do this one. kind of looks good all right now this one instead of using the move brush I'm gonna use the rotate um, and with C spheres if you rotate not from the C sphere but from the sort of the connection between them it will rotate the rest all right so I can use that to create this type of thing and again I'm just gonna try to keep this organic and, and fluid but trying to maintain as well like a, a nice uh, series of sharp angles and and changes in the direction. All right, I'm gonna check the I'm gonna check the chat and probably go for some water for two minutes. Um, so if you have any questions, just drop it in the chat and I will attend to them in just a second while I'm going for some water. All right, so this is again, nothing, nothing too obscure, some basic placement of the sea spheres. And the reason I don't wanna extend these branches too much or add more sub branches is because we're gonna use a, um, a really cool technique after. So we have about 30 minutes left. So I reckon we can move things a little bit faster now. Um, just before I go for the water, I'm gonna use the draw brush to create some C spheres here at the bottom. And these ones are going to be, we can even go into solo mode so it's easier. These are going to be the, the roots. So essentially we can do the same thing we did with the branches, one for the base and one for the tip to, the, to establish the length. And now let's get out of solo mode. We can determine where I want this to go. All right, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and click on the draw mode. 
add some more geometry and these are the C spheres that allows us to curve and, and tweak the placement of this a bit more. So I want this one to go sort of inside here and creating some kind of like arch arching like that. Maybe this one goes inside the rock actually. That's kind of good. And goes out and goes back in. So we need a couple more C spheres here and here. Alright, that's looking good. And this is kind of like one of the main Main, one of the main roots that is holding things together because most of the weight is towards the left side uh, that's, that's my interpretation of it so we'll make sure that this one is fat and has a good um, a good grip on that rock uh, maybe we can do a one more here looks like a good place to do another one Every time that I start working on these type of things, I can't help but think about Bob Ross <laughs> and just think to myself about like all these things, those, all the little sayings that he had about, oh, this, this root needs a little, a little friend here. Nobody deserves to be alone. Let's just add a little thing here. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I remember that, but it just kind of reminds me of Bob Ross. I used to watch him um, when I was a kid a lot. That and I remember Discovery Kids. It's a long time ago. Discovery Kids, there, there was this art attack. I think his name was Guile or Nile. And he did like the, the massive sort of like aerial views of the stuff. That was, uh, that was really impressive at that time. All right. So, um, I got this initial shape going. Um, this is gonna look way more interested in just a minute. I'm going to do a quick save. Um, I'm gonna grab some water and I'll be back in just a minute. Don't go. Oh, by the way, let me just check the, the chat. Um, can you turn your mic up a little bit? Uh, what's up with the sound? Hmm. Can you guys hear me? Uh, the mic is there. There's no no problem with the mic so far. Can you guys let me know if the if the mic is all right before I continue? It's very low. Hmm. Can you guys hear me better? Don't know what happened. It was working. I haven't touched it. Mm. All good. Awesome. Sorry about that. Don't know. Sound is really off. Huh. Don't know what that is. I haven't done anything different from what we did before. What we've been doing. So. Okay, you're using headphones. Um, maybe that's the thing. I mean, I can get closer to it. Put it around here. Is that better? Hmm. Don't know what that is. Have the microphone right next to me. Unless I speak to it like that. Very low. All right. Um, yeah, maybe using headphones would be better. I'm, uh, I'll look into that uh, later on. But yeah, let me just, I'm going to bring some water because I'm thirsty now. Uh, so let's take a one minute break. Give me one second. Be back.
right, we're back. Make the stream ASMR. I don't know those acronyms. If it is an acronym, or I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'll just speak a little bit louder as well, if I remember. Oh no, I don't know where I put my pen. Ah, oh, here we go. Alrighty, so where were we? Hopefully you guys can hear me better. Um, I haven't changed anything. So, right, so we're here with the base of this tree. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to the adaptive skin menu. And if I do just preview, this is like a Dynamesh. Let me turn on Polyframe. By default, this is Dynamesh. And that could be something that you want and then just do a, a theory measure. However, if you just turn, let's turn the Dynamesh resolution all the way to zero, do a preview, and that does the classic skinning of it. And I think it's, well, it's not the classic, classic, it's not the classic, classic skinning. There is an, an alternative classic skinning, but this is the one that I want to use because it just gives me geometry with where I place all the, um, the C-spheres and also creates those nice polygroups. So that's quite handy. So let's go ahead and maybe reduce the density. This density slider will determine how smooth the, um, the mesh is going to be cre when it's created or when it's turned into a, an adaptive skin. Hang on a second. So way better. Make the stream autonomous sensory median response. That is better. Okay. Um, I don't know where to do that. <laughs> you guys let me know from the... I guess in, uh, I'm using OBS as the, the streamer software. So anyway, that's something to look into for the next time. Uh, but thanks for letting me know. Um, so yeah, what I was saying is the density will determine how smooth or how many polygons this, how many subdivisions it will have when it's created. So now that I have it at one, at one, and the dynamic resolution to zero, so that it uses this type of skinning, let's create the adaptive skin. So the adaptive skin should be a different tool, this one right here. So we're going to copy that. Let's get out of the, so that we don't make things confusing. I'm going to turn off the preview of the C-spheres and paste the skin here. All right, so I'm going to take the, the C-sphere that I originally created, the, uh, the, the armature, and I'm going to hold shift and click this arrow here. And that way I have it at the top. So I usually have them at the bottom, but it doesn't really matter. So you see I have four subtools that I have hidden. Those are kind of like useless at this point, but I, I like to keep them if I want to redo something or go back and change things. So I just keep it there. So we have three subtools, the rocks, the base, and now the tree. Now what I'll do with the tree first is going with the move brush, make sure that uh, the accu curve is also enabled. And I'm going to shape it a little bit better so it doesn't look as just a tube. Just add a little bit of randomness as well. And I'm going to hold, sorry, hold shift to access the smooth brush. And I'm going to reduce the intensity so that I can control the, the smoothness with my, with the tablet or with the pen. I'm going to turn off that as well. Um, polyframe. So I'm going to sharpen these corners a bit more. And having this low poly geometry as well helps me to keep an eye on the on the flow and the continuity of this design. So like for example, you see here this line, if, I, if you can sort of follow the cursor, it goes like here and then goes in, similar to this one. So I can push this one out so that I, I know that this part needs to be thicker. And just follow the, you know, follow the, the flow, I guess. So I'm going to go over the entire mesh really quickly. I would probably spend way more time if, if I were doing this for um, a more polish piece. But I want to get the block out done at least in this, in this stream. Uh, but I think we're going to, we have like 20 minutes left. So we do this and then we do the, 
the leaves so that it doesn't I don't know how much um, how much time I can go over this time do you guys mind uh, checking the the schedule and see who's next I forgot and if I have some some extra time again I, I don't mind staying a little bit longer if you guys want but I don't want to take up time from anybody else I think Kyle st is Kyle still here Kyle Kyle it probably doesn't uh, I'll, I'll just type it in the in the chat and see if he can answer that question for me um, anyway so I just went ahead very quickly sort of shaping that that tree a bit more hey Kyle you can go longer brilliant thanks um, I won't go for too too long thanks Kyle Sorry for yelling at you. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure that I finish the blocking stage. All right, so all these things that I'm doing are just move brush with Accu Curve, and that's that's pretty much it. And the idea basically is to um, remove some of the blockiness generated by the the, the adaptive skin, so that the the distinction between the C spheres is not as clear. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna smooth out the, the tips a bit, just to make it a bit more pointing. And I think we're good to continue. So the next time, the next thing is create a little bit more of detail for the branches. So to do that, instead of doing the whole process again of the tree, we can reuse some of it. So what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate that base and I'm going to solo mode. And let's go ahead and hold control and shift. And let's go ahead and trim use the trim curve and I'm going to trim that maybe around here oops like that oh come on like that and then hold the alt key all right that's better let's check the the limit show right so that, that um, that one looks all right. I'm going to maybe just rotate it, make sure it's pointing upwards, like so. And let's go ahead and maybe change a few things, just so it doesn't look exactly like the like the piece that we cut out from the from the base. So this is going to be um, a branch that we're going to use just to add more more details. So in this case, we don't want the the base or the the main the main branch to be as thick. We want to keep it again consistent with what we discussed previously about the the proportions. So I want to try to slim that area out a bit and make sure that it kind of all looks the same in in terms of thickness, I guess. So just a smooth brush and and move brush that's all we need at the at this point all we need is smooth brush all right again this is uh, once once you've seen the the first part it's kind of like boring to or like it's just a repetitive action i'm not doing anything new here Alright, so I think this one looks alright for the most part. Let's turn polyframe off. Um, yeah, I think this could work as, um, as a branch. So now what I want to do is maybe fix the, the bottom bit a, a bit more. Um, I'm going to turn on Sculptress Pro. All 
right? It doesn't matter because I'm gonna do a quick a quick um, tree mesh. Oh, actually, let's just go ahead and do a decimation master rather than a pretty much the same process that we did for the for the rock. So I'm gonna create an insert mesh with this pre-process that bit and then decimate current. Ooh, two percent is too much. Let's do eight percent. That's still too much. Too extreme. Decimate current. Nah. Well, that's the good thing about decimation master. You can just undo and try it again. All right. This is more what I'm looking for. Cool. So let's go back to the top. I'm gonna re um, reset the the people. Just holding Alt. Make sure that. The rotation is fine. Uh, make sure that this is right in the center. Click on the house to make it right in the middle. Um, and now, before I like to do before I turn this into a insert mesh, actually, let me just rotate this a bit so that it's more like like that. Um, I like to unify that. And let's do a quick save. And similar process. Oops, similar process. Just click on the brush. Create insert mesh. Um, you know what? We can actually let's, let's get, cancel that. We can actually append that to the current insert brush that we have with the um, with the rock, and that way we create a, a brush that has all these bits and pieces. So let's do that. So create insert mesh um, with the current brush selected as the br as the brush with the rock. Create insert mesh, and instead of doing new, we just click append, and let's say okay. And now Silver created these two, so we have an insert an insert brush that can do this or can do this. Okay, so that's that's good. Uh, I'm gonna undo that, and I'm going to send this mesh to the to the top. Turn it off because we don't need it. That's just the one that we used to create the branches. Uh, let's get out of solo mode, and with the the branch selected for this for this tool or for this brush. I'm gonna go ahead and click somewhere here, start here at the, at the top, and you'll see that it creates this branch. Again, we can tweak the position of it because it's like floating at the moment. So let's just embed it a bit, even a bit more. Now that's too much. All right, so we do that to create some complexity, bring in the Gizmo 3D, and then we can just rotate it again so this is another process that uh, requires to be patient but I'll try to I'll try to do it fast Uh, one tip I can give you is don't when once you're dragging these branches uh, or a side drag them, try to not to make them thicker than the branch that you are placing it. Just that, so just to keep that proportion and that gradual sizing. So this one, for example, is fine. If I do this, it just looks a little bit unnatural because it's almost the same size as this. Um, so I can just undo that. And I'm not going to add too many branches either. Just want to make things a little bit more interesting and just add a few more uh, what it needs to, especially these little tips here. One problem that I can see uh, with this particular brush is that that the the piece of of the branch that we use to create the insert brush is is very easily recognizable. So it's gonna be very easy to spot the same branch over and over um, across the, the tree. So you could do more than one if you wanna add variety. Uh, I'm gonna leave it like that for the time being. But just so you know, and also another thing you can do is um, rotated 
quite a bit. Like every time that you insert it, depending on the angle, just look it from the front or whatever angle you're going to, to be using it, uh, the final render or the final model, and make sure that the, the rotation changes so that the, the branches don't look the same. All right, one more here. Also, if you want to keep a consistent size, let's say that you want to keep this the same size of the branch for everything, um, you can just hold Control while you drag it, and it will de it will be determined by the size of your brush. All right, one here. This one could be a bit thicker because it's at the bottom, and it could be just part of this or the branch. You can even do another one sticking out of this one just to make it more complex and just another one here this one also can be a bit thicker and I think we're getting to a point that uh, this looks interesting and quite detailed as well and as you see, uh, we use just a single brush for this, um, for the tree as well. Sorry, for the branches, and they all come from the the tree itself. So we actually just need to create one, and from there everything sort of spreads out. Just finalizing some of the tips in here. All right. I feel like this one needs something here as well. Alrighty. Cool. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, actually, no. I'm gonna do one more here, tiny one, just to break that line a bit more. And now let's go ahead and turn Polyframe on. You'll see this starting to look a little bit more complex. Um, I'm gonna run the auto groups again. So now we have each branch with a little different polygroup. And now what we can do is select the move topological brush and make sure that everything is properly embedded and, and all that. So I can I can move these things around so that oops so that they feel more connected with the actual with the actual tree. Okay, so that's looking good. So this this is just the the stage of integrating everything a little bit more but that's that's about it nothing super new here as well um i think i'm happy with this let's just do one more here how are we with time yeah we're just getting closer to the two hour mark um, so yeah, I'm happy with this as a, as a starting point. Um, we can just leave it like that as a block block out. Uh, we can definitely turn this into a dynamesh and then detail this, uh, or we can run the remesh by union that we used previously. So that is, it becomes a single object. Actually, let's do that first. Uh, remesh by union and accept. So now this is a single mesh, and we can do a redyna mesh if we want to. That's kind of like the same thing that I just did, or we can do like a series mesh. Um, so just to finish up, I'm going to show you a quick, really cool technique about um, how I would go about placing some leaves and using the branches to do so. So that's the, the last sort of technique that I'm going to show you today, and we'll leave it there 
for the next time we're gonna polish it and add, add all the details and, and start working a little bit more on on a more presentation on the presentation of it more than anything all right um, one thing you can do though before you do anything else is use the deformers with the with the with the tree as it is and just make like more interesting shapes but we'll leave that one for the end um, and do like some nice twisting and everything so let's go ahead let's do a quick save okay and I'm going to do I'm going to select a sphere and I'm going to turn that into polymesh 3d and I'm going to use the gizmo to quickly scale it down like that like so maybe not too much like that and this is going to be the the beginning of or this is going to be the, the leaf basically so I'm going to bring the gizmo again use the taper effect I'm going to push this like so so just with the, with the deformers you can cre create this like really nice effect and create a leaf really quickly or like the shape of it so that's it let's go accept cool I'm going to turn um, Sculptors Pro on and I think I did it in the wrong axis, did I? No, it's all good. So I'm going to enable the symmetry on the X axis and I'm going to bring in the damp standard brush with, again, with Sculptors Pro enabled and I'm just going to detail this a bit. Also, no, let's just leave it like that. We lost a little bit of the sharpness of the of the leaf in there, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna we're gonna fix it again. So this is gonna be super rough, just to get a, an idea of what this leaf is going to be. And we're gonna lose a lot of the details again because we're gonna use the I'm going to turn off um, symmetry we're going to use the decimation master again so you can spend more time and just do something more proper I guess but I'm just going to keep it simple like that um, so the other thing I want to do is I'm going to mask out or before I do that actually I'm going to duplicate this mesh and I'm going to rotate it around 180 degrees. I'm going to scale it up, push it down, and I'm going to use, um, I'm going to enable live booleans, and I'm going to turn this to a subtraction mesh. So now this is sort of subtracting that area, and we can just place, up, work with the placement a bit to to thin out that that leaf. All right, so that's, I think that's good. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm going to make a boolean mesh Again, this is super sketchy so here is the the resulting mesh and obviously we have this type of geometry that is not not very useful but it doesn't matter let's go ahead and also um, group visible so we have a single polygroup and then we can use sculptures pro to uh, refine this Alright, so that's good. Um, one thing I want to do as well is I'm going to bend this a bit. So we're going to select the mask. So and do this type of thing, something like that should be okay. Again, there's some polygons that are like intersecting that does, doesn't matter. I'm just using uh, Dynamesh. And let's go back and move that about there. So that starts to look more like a like a leaf. But again, very sketchy. I'm going to oh we can use Sculptures Pro actually. We don't have to redynamish anything. Alright, so that's looking a little bit better. Um, the next thing would be let's bring in the standard brush. And let's create that sort of center part of the leaf again, just accentuate that a bit more. 
All right, and then the snake hook brush, we can, with Dynamesh again, oops, not Dynamesh, Sculptures Pro, what am I saying? Um, just push that out, maybe not too much, and then hold shift to smooth, but then release the, the shift, so it do doesn't do the, the shrinking, it uses the other, uh, uh, the other algorithm that uh, basically scales up the mesh, or just inflates it. All right, so that's looking good. I'm happy with that. Let's go back to the move brush, make sure the accu curve is enabled. I'm gonna push this point here so that it's a little bit more, you know, towards what we want. And I'm gonna do some kind of, you know, again, I'm not using any reference, so I don't know what type of tree this is going to be. And if it, the if the actual leaves that I'm making matches the, the trunk and all that, um, that's something for, for later. Um, this is just a, a proof of concept and see if, if it works. Um, that's it. So I have this basic shape. I think I can also bend it a little bit more. So let's bring in the the former, which one I'm looking for, the bend arc. So we can do these type of things again with the formers really quickly. So I didn't have it in the in the center, but that's all right. That kind of looks all right. It's better to have some asymmetry as well. All right, I'm gonna accept that, and now we have these that we can turn into an insert brush again. So let's go and pre-process current. Now let's go ahead and decimate the current. We still have 11,000 now. This one needs to be way lower. Uh, that sort of kept the details. We're still 4,000. Let's do. I don't know what you re what you guys reckon. Um, I'm gonna go for five. All right, that. I think that should do it. Now the thing with this one is that I want to create. Um, again, let's select the brush that we've been working on, and let's click on insert mesh. Uh, before we do that, I'm gonna rotate this so that. Oops. Yeah, so it looks more more like that. Okay, um, from the top, brush, create insert mesh and append. So now we have it as well. Oops. We have it as well here as part of the insert brush that we created. So we can do this manually if we want to. Just add those leaves. However, I want to show you a really cool technique with nano mesh. So what I'm going to do is select a plane. It's a plain 3D, um, make it a polymesh 3D, and I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees. All right, um, probably scale that up as well. And we're just finishing up here. So what I'll do with this is just create, um, kind of like the, the placement of, the, of those leaves. So, and then we'll convert that into a nano mesh. So just before I do that, let's go ahead and use the move brush. And we use that, this move brush to, without Aki curve to deform this, this plane a little bit. So this is not gonna be the, the plane that we use for um, nano mesh. It's just a, a placement. So I wanna make sure that I have something that looks a little bit more rounded, way more rounded actually. If you, if you want something very precise, like a perfect sphere, you can also use the formers to just project um, a primitive in there. But I think that's, you get the idea, that's kind of like what I'm after. All right, let's go back to our brush, turn off polyframe, and then I'm gonna start adding these, these leaves. Uh, we can also play with the placement like so. And every time that you insert one, you can use the Gizmo 3D to just reposition it a little bit better. All right. Again, if you wanna be consistent with the size, you can hold control and the, and these leaves are going to be 
the size of your brush. So if I hold control right now, it will snap to that um, to the size of my brush and I can rotate it if you want to play with the placement. And if you want to change the size, all you need to do is change the size of your brush. That's about it. All right, we, I, I feel that we might have to, nah, I think it's gonna be fine. So I was just thinking, because this is gonna be a nano mesh, um, it's ultimately going to be an instance. So we can keep this, um, this placement of these um, leaves quite, quite free in terms of like the size, the polygon size, the polygon count, sorry. So right now we're at 23,000, so that's, that's pretty good. Not even worrying about it. Um, let me just check the chat. I just saw some some movement in there. I'll just check that in a second. Let me just finish with this and I'll check it actually, so that we don't. So we can continue and finish up this this guy in this tree. Um, you can also hold control, rotate things around. If I like like the uh, the depth and the position and the angle of this, it's just easier to just hold control and, and do these type of things. Just duplicate that. And just to scale it down to here, and I'm going to use these tiny ones to sort of cover that that centerpiece. And one more here, and we are done. All right, let's clear that mask. All right, so we have this sort of nice arrangement. Um, I'm going to hold control and shift to hide this in VET so I wouldn't have that plane and I'm gonna split hidden so now we have this and I'm gonna quick save check the chat and then I'm gonna show you how I do that with nanomesh all right so the channel is available until 1 1 p.m. cool 1 PM Australia time. All right, brilliant. So, by the way, the AS ASMR is relaxing thing. Some people feel with certain sound like tiny scratching whisper. Okay. So, yeah, we'll have to check that. I'll I'll talk with Kyle and and we might tweak that if we need to. Um, because like I said, when I change computers, I might not copy the entire settings that I'm using or that I was using in OBS, but um, yeah, I can hear myself fine, but obviously you guys have a different connection and all that. So uh, you could use fiber mesh to create planes for the nano mesh. Yep, um, that's, that's actually a, a, an interesting technique for a, a different thing that we did last session. At, towards the end of last session, um, I showed how how to use that technique, how to use the planes from, from the fiber mesh to create nano mesh. So, but in this case, I don't want to do that because I want to manually place the, um, I want, I want to, I want to create planes to manually, I want to manually place the planes and then I want to nano mesh those planes, not necessarily to create the, these leaves, just because I want to have uh, more control over it. So, um, so Van, alguien sabe cómo acceder al menú de Essential? If you're referring to this menu, we sorry, this menu with the Essential brushes, um, that's just a custom menu that I built. So these two panels are just custom menus. Um, so I just name it Essential. You you'll see at the top I have two panels. So my tools and brush stuff. So brush stuff has the Essential brushes that I mostly use. I'm missing a few um, because of my Again, because I changed computer, so I have to reset that. But it's something that you do, you know, um, it's your custom thing. So, all right, let's go ahead. Oh, by the way, if these essentials are just what I consider essential for my workflow, not necessarily for yours, and this, all these brushes come by default in ZBrush. 
I'm just missing literally six that I um, that I customized. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the brush thumbnail, create an insert mesh. Create a, uh, this time, actually, we can append that. No problem. So now we can do these type of things manually and create like very nice looking complex effects. And that all came from a very simple mesh. Okay. So that's not what I'm going to do in this scenario. But now that we have that, we can turn this insert mesh into a nano mesh brush. So create nano mesh brush. And now we have that. Right. So just so that we clear to what we're doing, I'm going to hold um, on the brush palette. I'm going to hold Alt key. And if you hold the Alt key and the select icon, Sirius is going to take whatever is on the current um, screen or the canvas, and it will create an icon for you. So just so we know that this is the brush that I'm going to be using as a nano mesh. Now, the next step would be to create a plane. So let's go ahead and create a, a plane 3D, make a poly mesh. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees again. Um, and then, actually, I'm going to simplify that. So it's going to change the direction again. I'm going to go down to the initialize tab and I'm going to create a Q grid, but I'm going to create it with only one as the resolution. So Q grid. And if I turn polyframe, you'll see this is a single plane. It doesn't have any subdivisions or anything. So I'm going to rotate that about there. Okay. And this is a thing again, single plane, nothing. It's the most, one of the most simple geometries or anything that you can have in 3d. So four vertex creating a face basically. And I'm going to click on the brush and I'm going to create an insert mesh. I'm going to create a new one um, because this is a nano mesh brush currently. So I'm going to create a new one. So this is what this allows me to do. Just manually place these planes. So what's good about that is that now we can go to our project or a sub tool. Um, let's go ahead and go into solo, turn this off and I'm going to place these planes like so. So depending on where you click, you're going to get a different angle. And this is what I want. Just So I think this might work. Um, obviously, we can tweak all that. But the fact that these are planes means that we don't have to um, change the insert mesh. We can just change the placement of these, of these planes. And also means that we're going to be using a single mesh that we can instance. And what's good about that as well is that we can simply change the instance of that mesh that we're using to insert at any point and update all those planes at once. So we save quite a bit of time um, if, you, if you're just, you know, prototyping or, or testing an idea and see if it works. All right. So, and also this could be a, another, another way that you can use to do a, like a very low poly mesh. And don't place too many too many planes. I think I'm just going way over the top, but remember that each plane is going to have essentially the, the, the mesh that we created as, a, as an insert mesh. So it's going to have quite a bit of polygons. Also, I'm going to, oh no, I already did. So, um, just a few more. I'm going to turn double. Yeah, that's, that's better. <laughs> um, I definitely went over the top with the, with the planes. Hopefully it's not going to look too weird, but, uh, less is more in this case. Oops, I'm putting that in the floor. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. So you guys, um, I, I, I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. And obviously 
later we can we can tweak it even more. Um, but that's that's essentially it. Now another thing that we can use these planes for is we can because they're all individual ones. Let's just um, we'll control click and drag that. I'm going to turn polyframe on and I'm going to hide. Let's do an auto group again and I'm going to hide the base. Well, hide the base and I'm also going to split hidden. Okay, so now the planes are sitting one um, single subtool. And because they're all individual planes, we can simply bring in the deformation palette. So I have the inflate one and I can just scale these ones up and move them around. However, I'm not going to do that because again, the the placement of the nano mesh, we can do that all from the nano mesh palette. That's why I wanted to try this technique. So now that we have that, um, let's bring in our custom brush, the one that we created for the simulator. So this one, and we have this one selected as a nano mesh and we can hover over any face or any plane really right click and I'm going to leave the insert nano mesh as the action and the target I'm going to change to all polygons. So it's going to do it in all the, the, the faces. And now we can just click and drag like so. And we just created our bonsai with a single drag. I mean, we did do a little bit of you know work to get to this point, but um, my point is that once you have this, it's really simple. Obviously the, the plane is visible, but it's a nano mesh, so we can go to nano mesh, right? And you can turn off the show placement, so that looks a little bit better. Uh, I kind of like it, so let's go ahead and do a quick save. And <laughs> and this is a happy little tree, as Bob would say. Um, doesn't have many friends, but we can create a friend for him later. So the other thing that we can do with this nano mesh, you'll see some of the planes here are not working properly. These ones are intersecting and all that. But again, they're simple planes. So one thing we can do is play with the um, a bit of randomness with the size. So right now this is the size. I can change it to be like this type of or this type of tree. So we can play with this very easily with the nano mesh um, technique. We can also uh, change the rotation a bit. Maybe the, the Z rotation is the one that I'm more interested in to make it at least um, random so we can add variation to it. And in terms of the size, we can increase the width, maybe point 0.1, point 0.2, not too much, same as the length, 1.2, and, and the, sorry, the length and the height, 1.2 as well. So length, height, and and the width, they're going to be exactly the same. So that's essentially doing the same thing as increasing the size. But having a value more than one or higher than one, in this case, allows us to play with the with these um, randomized or variables or variation of the of the three um, attributes in here. So that can change quite a bit. I mean, I want to keep it, you know, subtle. Maybe reduce the size again. And now what we can do to sort of fix some of these ones is go to the move brush. So I'm going to select the move brush. Now let's do the move topological with a larger brush. And because we have the move topological and their individual planes, we can reposition this really quickly like that. Obviously, if we turn on the placement, we can see a little bit better what we're doing with that plane. And we can even, you know, hold control, mask the plane, invert that, and bring in the gizmo 3D, select that center, and then we just, you know, reposition that on its own. So that's just a, a good and quick way to manually fix that. Uh, but again, because it is a plane, now that it's in there, we just reposition a plane, but we still can control everything from NanoMesh. So all these planes here as well, we can, in fact, we can actually, let me just do something else. I'm going to turn nano mesh off, turn this on the polyframe. We can do auto groups 
and that allows us to easily isolate planes like this one for example and we can mask that bring back everything invert the mask oh, what did I do oh, that was that was a mistake <laughs> let's don't do that um, the problem was that I didn't do that before the nanomesh and so if I change the polygrouping it's gonna obviously change the placement of the of the nanomesh um, no biggie we can just do it manually like I was doing it and obviously you want, might want to have some more control about how things are overlapping and things like that but I think for a for a quick for a quick sketch and a prototype or an idea of what we want to create this is fine um, we can definitely spend some time tweaking things around making sure everything is fit, fitted the way that we want to and we are gonna call it day so hopefully guys you you find uh, some value in this um, first of all let me just delete these ones I don't I don't wanna see any of this and I'm gonna delete hidden all right so that's better um, turn off perspective let's turn off the placement turn off polygroup and let's do a quick save and here is the block out of the bonsai do a quick render to, to show you all right so that's it guys I don't know if you guys have any question or anything that you want me to answer um, I think I, I cover most of the things that I wanted to show you guys so the, the building of the base for the for the rocks the C sphere for the armature the insert meshes and building a complex object out of the most basic objects so I think I covered what I wanted to show you today um, if you can if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat I'll I'll check them and try to answer them uh, otherwise, this is the blockout stage. We'll try to continue that in the next um, the next session, and obviously make it more detailed work on the on the bark and bark texture of the of the tree, and you know add more details and make sure that the placement of, of all this is good. Um, yeah, because I would like to finish this one as well. Try to keep the sessions maximum to two in terms of the of the object that we're working on. So not more than two sessions working on the same object so that we can add variety as well um, but yeah if you don't have any questions I will leave it here guys and I will catch you next week uh, by the way the if, again if you weren't here uh, there's some construction site here um, so that's all the background noise uh, so what, what I was saying is that if you um, if you guys access, if you weren't here, um, I mentioned that if you access the Serious Guides live, uh, Serious Guides website, it's currently down, and it's not down. It's just I've, I've been doing some work on it and improving a, a lot of stuff. So now I'm at the last stage, the last stage when I'm um, migrating some bits and pieces and fine tuning some other stuff, um, working on responsiveness and, and other minor things. Uh, but it should be it should be ready by next week. So. Um, Definitely keep that in mind. Check it out. Next week, the ZBrush Live 2.0 is probably most likely going to be live. Um, all right. Other than that, I think we're done here. So have a have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.